a hell of a semi-final. He was up against William Cholo for Bulgaria, bronze medalist in the World Youths, and he won 3-2. He needed to win the final round, and he did, and he needed a 10-8 as well, and he got one from Italy. And then that judge went his way on the judge's decision, and he went through. It doesn't get any tighter than that. Uh, representing Ukraine, here comes Alexander Kizniak, one of the best known and most attractive fighters really in either boxing over the last few years. Had a really good fight with Sai Jamshid Jafarov, the Asian champion in the second round here, won that. Got a walkover in his semi-final against Rami Kiwan. He's been a European champion, a World Youth champion, a European Games champion, a world champion, and very, very nearly an Olympic champion. Silver in Rio, he was winning the fight against Herbert Conceição and then he got knocked out, he got stopped in the third and final round. It would have been absolutely heartbreaking for him. A lot of people assumed he would turn pro after the Olympics, but he hasn't. And as I said about Kelly Harrington, it's good to see, it's good to see that the futures of these athletes can be competed for and secured by the amateur code. Ivor have done everything they can the last 18 months or so to make it as attractive as possible and Kishniak is continuing. He was at a bill I was commentating on, a pro bill in Kiev just before Christmas, and the journalists there were telling me that he wanted to continue. He wants that Olympic gold medal more than anything else. And in typical Kishniak fashion, he's starting quick here, digging his toes in and letting his hands go, working to the body. And so Sulin has got to stand up to this, tucking up there the Russian fighter, doing an effective job of it as well trying to throw his own uppercut and this is already a good fight and Sasulin with a nice right hand to the body there but Kishniak absolutely relentless just pounding away at the forearms of Sasulin found a little gap for the left hand into the body and then the left uppercut the referee telling them to mind their heads but they're just rubbing against each other they're leaning in there's nothing wrong with what they're doing and Kishniak beginning to get on top of Sasulin a little bit here now. Crashes a right hand through the guard, steps off to the side, looks for the uppercut, doesn't quite land it. But he is like a machine. Big right hand there, Sasulin felt that one. He's just looking to try and survive at the minute a little bit here. But we've only had 70 seconds of this opening round, which is incredible in itself because so much leather has been thrown here. Kishniak just pouring it out and Sasulin well I don't think he'll have been in a fight like this at this kind of level ever to be honest with you Kishniak looking for a big right hand again there Sasulin isn't showing any sign of wilting here but he is fighting Kishniak's fight that is for absolutely certain at this kind of range this is exactly what Kishniak wants as I say he'll dig those toes in, he'll just lean forward a little bit and look to get a real purchase on his punches. Looks for the uppercut again there, chopping down with the right hand. And then going for the uppercut, straight right hand. This is Sulin looking to try and throw back there. He's tough, Pavel Sasulin, that's for sure. Get a right hand from Kishniak. Sasulin sets his feet, but nothing that he's thrown is having any real effect on the Ukrainian, who has not taken a single backward step since the beginning. He's held the centre. There's the jab, a, a longer uppercut that time from Kishniak. Forces Sasulin back to the ropes. The punch output in this opening round from Kishniak has been absolutely ridiculous. So Sulin, though, giving credit, he's taking this. He's looking to try and soak it up and fire back towards the end of the round here. And these two just standing square and trading. Terrific stuff to watch. Tremendous opening round. Tremendous opening round. It really was. Kishniak was out of the World Championships in October, November time, towards the end anyway. He didn't compete. And that added further fuel to the rumours that he was going to be turning pro but 
I think he just took a little bit of time to get over that Olympic defeat. Ten nines across the board there in favour of Kizniak. As you would expect. There were fighters who boxed at the Olympics who, who competed and won gold at those World Championships. Hugo the Cruz, Andy Cruz, to name a couple, who achieved that, that unique double. So I think physically he would have recovered Kizniak, but I think mentally the heartbreak of, of Tokyo would have taken a bit of coming to terms with, no matter how mentally strong and resolute you may think yourself to be. Into the second round, and Kizniak again just coming forward here, leading off with that left hand to Sulin. He's thrown some good punches. He's tucking up, he's keeping his boxing together, he's not giving anything away. He's looking to get his work done when he can. Nice left hand there from Sasulin. But Kizniak is the one pushing him back. Good uppercut on the inside there again, though, from Sasulin. He's in the red. Right to the body from Sasulin. Kizniak sticks out that lead left, creates a little bit of space for himself, and then fires in the one-two and there's that right cross not too much coming back from Sasulin in the last 20 seconds or so just sets his feet there right as I say that and tries to let go there's that right hand again then a step off to the side and he looks to create the angle for the uppercut good combination there from Sasulin this is extraordinary stuff it really is the amount of punches that's been thrown here, well, if you were trying to compile punch stats for this, it would be a difficult job because I'm not sure you'd be able to count them all. Another volley there from Kizniak, who never throws singles. It's always combinations. And he is on top of you constantly. Again, that right hand, that, that right cross. Sasulin steps forward and looks for the uppercut, tries it again. but he's just been worn down here by Kizniak. A minute to go in round two. He lost that first round, 10-9. There's some blood coming from somewhere, I think, on the face there of Sasulin. A bit of blood coming from the end of the nose. There's not much pop on his shots now as he looks to try and sink a few in. He just cannot keep Kizniak off him. There's that one-two again. And just pumping out those hands again there, Sasulin. Got plenty of admiration for him and the way he's gone about this. Left to the body there from Kizniak. Reaches round the side, looking for the floating rib with that longer left hand to the body. Final 15 seconds of round two and He's probably slowed down a bit in this second round, Kizniak, but not an awful lot. Looking for a good finish to the round here to Sulin. Just swinging, got caught by a left hand there. And there goes the bell. And everybody in the Sophia Hall very much appreciating the effort that these two are putting into this. And another thing to take into account here is that Sasulin had a hell of a tussle against Cholov in his semi-final, whereas Kizniak got a, a walkover. And there's a 10-8 in there from France in that second round. The other judges happy with 10-9s, so he's clearly in front here, Kizniak, heading into the third and final round, just keeping an eye on Sasulin in his corner, in that red corner. He's just sucking the air in, sucking it up. He looks actually in pretty decent shape, obviously. Very, very fit, in top, top condition, because this has been hard. And it's not going to get any easier. Third and final round, Pavel Sasulin of Russia in the red. Alexander Kizniak, a much decorated Ukrainian in those Ukrainian colours. Good right hand there from Kizniak. 
just tapped a little bit by his standards with the first couple of punches and really sunk in the right hand. Rolls underneath the left hook there from Sasulin. As I said in the previous round, Sasulin has not given anything away here. He's tried to keep things tight. He's done a good job of it with that guard up. I just wonder if it would have been at all possible for him to just try and give a little bit of ground and use that jab more as a method of, of keeping Kizniak at bay, move a little bit more. It's easy to say Kizniak's a kind of fighter who just forces you into his fight. Again, there's that combination. It's never single shots with Kizniak. Just as I say that, he threw a single jab to the body, but you get my meaning. It's very rarely one punch. It's almost always a combination. Good left to the body there from Sasulin. And again, just taking a, not a breather exactly, Kizniak, but maybe the foot just went off the gas slightly there, just past the midway point of round three. And to he's not going to get anything on the cards here, of that much I'm sure, but he's put a lot into this. <laughs> Uppercut got through there from Sasulin. Kishniak just pushing off with the forearm a little bit there. The referee didn't like that into the final minute. Sulin looking for a big right uppercut. And again, just throwing right to the end here. Both of them are just simultaneously in unison almost, letting their hands go. There's a little bit of space opened up between them. I think this is probably Sasulin's best round of the three, actually, and credit to him for that. He's done everything he can here to try and stay with Kizniak. He's had to dig really, really deep. So there's a clap of 10 seconds, and these two are just going to stand square and let their hands go here. And this is a fitting end to what has been a thoroughly entertaining fight. You suspected that it would be. Most fights that Kijniak is in are just that, an embrace between the two at the end, which is good to see, particularly good to see at the moment. And a healthy round of applause here as well. It's Kijniak who's going to get the gold get Ukraine on the medal board. Kizniak gets it by unanimous decision. But Sasulin very much played his, his part in that fight. He is just a machine, Alexander Kizniak. And you can see that that mission of Olympic gold in Paris, well, it begins now almost. Three rounds to nil on all five cards. There was a 10 8 in there from the French judge. And the fact that there weren't more 10 8s is testament to the fact that Sasulin was always looking to throw back. There were spells where he was on the receiving end and things were maybe beginning to look a little bit grim, but at no point did he really look like he was coming apart. That never happened. He kept his defences as solid and tight as he could, but knew that he had to let his hands go when he got the opportunity, and that's exactly what he did. And I think we've got some medal ceremonies coming up now, have we? The next fight that is due to be in the ring is the women's like, middleweight final between Valentina Kalsova of Kazakhstan and Galina Golovchenko of Russia. I can't see them over on the far right-hand side where the fighters 